Hey folks, welcome back to On The Bench. Today I'm going to be tying you up my steel and copper coronamid. This is a coronamid very similar to one that I've done very, very well with up in the Tunkwili, Kamloops sort of area. Um, and the color I'm going to show you for the body is very similar to our, our old 6916 Flashaboo color, uh, gunmetal color. So make sure you have these materials handy before you tie the fly. For hook I'm using a size 14, it's a TMCO TMC2457. It's a scud hook, size 14, and I'm using a tungsten uh, bead. You could use brass, just in a copper color. I only had a 564th in tungsten, so that's what I'm using. For thread, I'm using Semperfly Classic Waxed in Rust. For the rib, I'm using a fine copper wire. For the gill, you could use um, Uni Stretch. If you have Uni in white, I'll be using Semperfly flat braid in pearl. And then for the body, I'm going to be using Semperfly and it's steel. Um, I only have this one size, it's the smallest size, 0.4 millimeter. So I'm using three pieces of it, steel color. Um, it's very similar to our old 6916 Flashaboo. This is the most similar color I've seen to, to the 6916. So. And then to coat the fly, I'll be using the New Raids app Super Thin, which is out. Really great formula. So I've gone ahead and slid my bead onto the hook with the wide end of the bead facing forward because I want it to easily slip over my gill material. I'm just going to start my thread uh, right at the front here. Let's get a few wraps. Now, as I said in the intro, there's, there's several different materials you can use for gills. I mean, the traditional around here in BC, everyone kind of goes with the, the uni stretch is one of them and I think you know dry fly polyurn would probably work really good. Um, I've been experimenting with different kind of um, gill materials for the last few months. Uh, I've used the the micro glint tinsel in pearl by Semperfly. Just several strands of that very nice for my Helter Smelter Chronomid and a couple of my other ones. Um, also in pearl they have flat braid and that's what I'm going to use in this fly. Um, it's very easy to use and the reason I like and they also have sorry floral braid uh, which I have not tested in a lake yet but I have put it in a couple of my coronamids. I just want to see if it soaks up that algae color or takes on any of the color of the lake. I know for sure that the micro glint doesn't. I tested that out last year so you know when it's midsummer in Tunkwa or Leighton and there's algae floating everywhere you can use that stuff and it won't discolor your uh, gill, gill material if you don't like using white beads like me. Uh, I don't much use like using them. They also have like a, the gel core body microfrits in white and I've been thinking about trying to use uh, this material. But for today I'm going to start with the flat braid. So I'm just going to take a little piece of it and snip it off. You can also brush this flat braid out and make it fluffy. Um, I'm going to leave it just the way it is for now. I'm just going to take it and do a pinching uh, loop. Just one, two, three wraps. And now I'm going to try and snip this as much as best I can on an angle. And then I'm going to go right into the whip finish. You can brush it out afterwards too, like after, you're, uh, after you finish uh, whip finishing it. Like that. Snip off your thread. And now you can bring your bead and just slide it right to the front, right over that bump. Um, I like to cut my gills in, uh, right away, and I usually just line them right up with the eye of the hook. That's how I like mine. You can slightly tilt it. But like that. Now you can take your uh, same thread and just restart it back on the hook with a jam knot. Just starting to build my little taper here towards the bead before I tie anything else in. Oh, the material is dropping, it's sticking to me. Just one second. There we go. Now I like to take the rib material. So for this one, I'm using the copper um, fine wire because. Pretty much the closest to the 
uh, fly that I've used quite a few times at Tunkwa Lake um, that uh, has an anti-static bag uh, body and the brown underbody, but I do like the gun, the gunmetal color is deadly. Um, and the original, so gunmetal color that you can't get anymore, this is the 6916, I have a whole hank of it still. I have done a comparison, I'll be putting up a picture and stuff to the um, steel by Semperfly as a comparison. So very, very, very similar, very hard to tell them apart. I will say that. I'm just going to tie the wire. I'm just tying it right on the side here, trying to maintain a nice smooth underbody. As I get down towards my bend, I'm going to give my thread a counterclockwise spin just to flatten it out. I like my uh, crown to stay quite thin. And I like to just go right about halfway down the bend or so. And then I do like to, to put in just two wraps um, just in behind the wire to lock it in there. Now I'm going to get my thread one more counterclockwise spin before I bring it back up. Do nice touching turns. And then if your uh, taper isn't quite right, you can at this point now work on your taper. And I'm just going to flatten my thread out one more time before I come down the my taper is almost where I want it to be. I just want to come a little bit farther down I like to go just to, to that halfway point or so. Like so. And now you want to put in a whip finish so that your uh, thread does not move. It's always good to put several of them in. Build them into your fly. So now I'm going to take I basically got one longer piece and one um, not quite so long piece of the steel and I'm just going to take the longer piece and wrap it around my thread to make two pieces. And then I have the um, the other piece just... <laughs> I want to do this. I had it all planned out. I'm just going to take the two pieces, tie it on like that with two wraps. And now I just want to have three. I tried four, it was a little bit too much uh, for this size hook. So I'm just going to snip my, I'm stuck to my finger here. So now I'm just going to take this and also tie in the third piece. Um, you can use two. I've done several with just two pieces. If you miss it, you can, or if you don't want to even take extra wraps, you can take your um, tinsel and just slide it right under your thread, like so. And then just pull it to length. Sometimes that makes it easier to do. lock that in. Now I like to take a little bit of, um, I've got the brushable crazy glue that I get at uh, Michael's, or you can get it online, I think. And I just like to give it a tiny dab, not much at all, before I start spinning my uh, vise and trying to build a nice um, body. With some touching turns, trying not to leave too many gaps. I am going to bring it back up again, so if you have a gap or two, it's not a huge deal. I'm <laughs> the best at using a rotary vise still. I didn't learn on one, so it's taken me a number of years to get used to using one. In fact, it takes me longer to do this than just to wrap it by hand. <laughs> As I get down to the bottom, I just like to do it by hand. Um, I don't like to break my tinsel and my hook point after all this. Just take your time. And then just go around it. Now I'm, I'm, I'm pulling it quite tight as well. Trying to keep the three strands together. Bring it all the way back up. Now you can shorten your thread. Just make sure I'm holding them all and then tie that off. So get my bobbin cradle out of the way. I'm trying to keep my thread as close to the bead as I can. 
<laughs> well, not like that. You can just pull it if it slides like that. I like to make a couple in front before I cut my material. I'm just pulling it as tight as I can, snipping it. And I'll definitely put a whip finish in at this point. I have blown apart quite a few bodies. <laughs> I'm not going to mention how many by not doing that. Well, I'm trying to bring my rib up the body. Everyone who knows me knows I'm not a huge fan of tying coronamids, uh, but they are the most prolific food source we have here in BC for our stillwater trout. So <laughs> at some point, fish as many coronamids as I do, you gotta start tying them. And I'm gonna try and make about seven ribs. And then tie that off. My thread just keeps wanting to slide down my coronamid. If it does that, you can apply a little bit of wax to it if it's really bothering you. I'm just trying to make sure I'm not missing too many gaps. Like that. And now I'm just going to take and uh, helicopter my wire. so and then whip finish so this fly is also really deadly um, in an anti-static bag especially in the Tunkwa Leighton area I like to give it two pull your thread super tight and then just snip it now I'm going to take my UV resin. I'm using the Raid Zaps, new Raid Zap Super Thin. I really like this formula. Um, good job, Justin, on this one. Raid Zap is one of the least toxic, if not the least toxic UV resin there is, um, and the only one I can really use without any symptoms I, I get from this stuff. And yeah, I'm really, really impressed with this new formula. My chronomids have never looked better. <laughs> I'm gonna take my, I have the Raid Zap Light, my little cure. And then I always like to do two coats um, of the UV resin. I'm just gonna take and give it one more little coat. really brings out that, that rust color um, thorax. Really nice, really nice color. Let me cure that up. And that's it, my copper and steel coronamid. If you haven't been over to the website lately at sfotf.ca, make sure you check it out. If you're looking for flies to buy, Dawn's got some brand new fly packs available over there. Uh, one of my flies, one of my damsel flies is actually included in the damsel pack. Thank you very much, Dawn. That's very cool. Um, there's merchandise, past videos from all the different shows, this season's videos. You get to see them before they come out on TV and they're all up there and, and all the fly tying from the pro staff uh, members as well and, and Dawn. Thanks for joining me on this edition of On the Bench. Take care, everyone. Conserve the waters, and as always, tight lines. <laughs>